Hey guys, Veronica here. Today I want to talk about weeds. Specifically, what do you do with them? So, I've gotten a lot of questions about weeds lately, and at the same time I've been getting a lot of questions about compost lately, and I never realized until recently that people don't connect those dots all the time. So let me back up. I actually go through the topping process, not only with some of my vegetables like peppers, but also with my weeds. And I'll tell you why. Now, I have basically unlimited access to the amount of manure and straw bedding that comes out of the chicken and duck pen. And I need green matter to mix with that to effectively decompose it in a compost pile such as this. So where are you gonna get that green matter from if not from your weeds? I think that weeds get villainized because they mess up the idea of the like American lawn um, and you want that perfect green grass without you know dandelions popping up everywhere. But in our lawn, the dandelions popping up everywhere, I'm cutting between six inches and a foot from basically the beginning of the season on out until they just completely die with the summer heat because I want to grow this biomass so that I can get my two to one green to brown ratio in my compost pile. Now I'm doing this with everything from dandelions like that to um, this goose foot. It's like a wild amaranth. I think it's goose foot, uh, something in that family. I'll use that a lot. It's really great green matter. And also with stuff like even Johnson grass, which a lot of the Johnson grass goes to the field as mulch and gets mulched in place versus it being um, part of the compost pile. But every so often I'll pull the stuff from the yard and use that as well. Again, everything I'm cutting six inches to a foot above the soil line, sometimes right at the soil line if it's in a space where um, we don't want those plants sticking up. But along fence lines, you know, kind of in brush areas, I'm really actively topping my weeds so that they will grow those side shoots so that I can produce more green biomass for this pile. So when I get them over to the pile, what I'll do is I'll basically just chop them up a little bit so that we get that decomposition process happening a lot faster. And you can essentially do this with any weeds that you have access to. Um, I wouldn't do it with anything that's poisonous to touch as far as like poison oak, poison ivy. I don't do it with any thorny plants such as mesquite or greenbriars because those thorns, they just dry out and get sharper. They don't really decompose even when they're green. And I'm wearing a glove because in here I have some hogweed. And hogweed actually, you can have a reaction, a skin reaction to it when it's fresh. But by the time it decomposes into compost, it's basically harmless in your garden. So a lot of the plants that I like to use for this, a lot of the weeds I like to use for this, tend to be bioaccumulators. And so if you know anything about your soil and you know that you don't have a lot of heavy metals or um, th those sorts of like more toxic things that you wouldn't want in your compost pile, then, but you're on, especially if you're in like clay soil, then these guys, the dandelions, um, the grasses, a lot of the various like weedy deep taproot plants that you'll find in your fields or on the perimeter of your property, are actually excellent bioaccumulators, meaning that they're bringing a lot of nutrients and um, trace minerals to the surface for other plants to use, and also potentially storing it in their own plant cells. So we want to compost all of that down and have like a really rich, fertile compost where we're just layering these in. Now I'll use fruit tree prunings. This is from a almond and the biggest difference with tree prunings is that you don't want really thick woody stems that are going to take a long time to break down. So I'll trim off all of these like auxiliary branches and then just go through and strip the rest of this branch of its leaves so that I have all of that nice green matter, but not the stuff that you can see like if you can't break it super easily, if it shreds like this, like you're probably, it's not going to break down in here so quickly. So, and I'll just keep stacking this pile and layering and alternating. Um, I built it a couple of days ago, and as you can see, it's already sunk down about six inches. Just this decomposition process is starting. It's getting great airflow from all sides, thanks to this completely wire fence wrap, which is the direction I'm going for, you know, building compost at an effective scale very quickly without having to turn the pile. Um, I mentioned using grasses. Sometimes your grasses look like this. Sometimes your dandelions look like this. These are all your seed heads. You don't want to throw them in here unless you want more of this wherever you're going to use this when it's done. 
So I'll just chop those off right here in place. I may throw them somewhere where I want more of that grass or more of that plant. I don't really chop off the dandelion ones because I don't mind those growing everywhere. I think that they're really useful plants to have around. So, and then I'll just chop this guy up a little. These stems may not break down so quickly, but I'll throw them in there. And that's pretty much it. So if you live in an area where you have a lot of plants growing that you don't want there, rather than reaching for something to spray them, whether it's Roundup or vinegar or Epsom salts or whatever the internet tells you how to kill those weeds, think about either cutting those weeds or pulling them, although I highly recommend leaving the roots in place and cutting them. Um, but if you need to pull them, pull them. And think about taking those weeds from that space and using them, like giving them an active purpose, whether it's mulch on a bed, you know, that you don't mind how the mulch looks, but you need to build up that mulch layer to protect your roots, or whether it's using them in a compost pile like this. It's a really great way for you to reincorporate and close the loop as far as your gardening goes and not have to buy extra materials like straw or um, wait for plants to die so you can compost and have the right green to brown ratio. And so then what I'll do right here is I'm just digging a little hole because I brought my compost pile, compost bucket from this morning and last night stuff and I gotta dump it because we get fruit flies and ants like crazy. But I'll just dig a little hole right in the middle of this pile and then I will just dump that right into the center where it is going to cook the most and then just bury, cover that back up and drop some more green on top, drop some more brown on top, keep piling until I see some nice soil starting to make its way down along the bottom and I'll probably dig into this at the base um, in about a month or two. So you're looking at a fairly quick turnaround for a pile built like this, which is nice. And also just a really good way to use those plants that you don't want. Again, do you know, the idea of spraying weeds is so foreign to me, but I know people do it because I see the commercials for it when I watch TV. And it just doesn't make any sense because if you have this perfectly good material growing in your yard for you to use to your advantage, to your garden's benefit, to your own benefit, then why not use it that way? So if you have any questions about this space, um, other than you know like the very brief rules as far as not using poisonous plants, not using thorny plants, um, making sure that you have good ratios and not spraying your weeds, then please leave me those questions and comments in the comments below. As always, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, ding that bell, and follow me on Instagram at Flavor Kit for more cooking and gardening and um, just lifestyle sort of posts in what can we do to engage with nature and our ecosystems a little more effectively and in a very um, kind fashion. So that's it for today, but until next time, happy gardening.